Today's talk is entitled, Are the Vedic Diva Gods Orbs? And so, I just don't want to do this quick little video. Uh, many may not know about the Vedic, Vedic the Vedas, uh, their mass, their astronomy. I am not a Vedic scholar. Um, I have been scholared in my research into the orb bar wave. So, my apologies if I interpret anything incorrectly, but it's what I've observed uh, that ties into these ancient Vedic scriptures in relation to my research into orbs. So the the Vedas uh, uh, referenced um, uh, in Sanskrit as knowledge. Uh, there are a large body of text uh, from ancient India. Uh, in Sanskrit, which some of our biblical texts were were also uh, written in Sanskrit, and uh, they're the oldest scriptures of Hinduism or Sanskrit Sanskrit literature. So that's just a little bit of background of what the Vedas are, and the Devas are part of Vedic uh, scripture the scriptures. And cosmology and creation and again that uh, may or may not be uh, the best um, interpretation of it uh, linguistically uh, the Rig Veda which is one of the sections of uh, the Vedic scriptures is the oldest of the Vedic scriptures and uh, obviously it was composed in the Bronze Age there is some evidence to suggest that some of these scriptures are even older. They reference um, cities um, which sat on a river and they've been carbon dated, uh, the Indo, Indo River uh, Basin, and uh, they've been dated uh, uh, way beyond, way before that date. So these scriptures are generally accepted as 1700 BC making them the oldest stuff that we have alongside the cuneiform of the Babylonians and maybe some of the Greek linear A and linear B text so it's uh, my interest in the Bronze Age um, I put uh, a couple of images in the book I wrote to the Scandinavian rock art society about um, orbs in the presence of the in the presence of their rock art and uh, what we have is hookweb orbs here and the wave and the serpent and uh, what has been done by the archaeologists is they've painted them with a vegetable dye and then they hose them off but what they've done is carefully painted them and then photographed them so that they preserve the this ancient knowledge of the orb I wrote to them they don't like my interpretation and they don't like me uh, the Scandinavian Rock Art Society that is uh, I think that they I've offered uh, uh, my publications to them so but that's that's up to them uh, that's how science advances um, generally in the early days of finding out these things there's quite a lot of negativity there's a lot of p people who've invested a lot of time in in trying to interpret it and when somebody who's, who's done 20 years of research into orbs suddenly comes and says oh they're, they're like the hookweb orb and they're like this and they're like that and i can predict what you what are the things you will get um it breaks away all their theories so people have the jobs to protect really so anyway going back to the Hinduism the divas now the diva uh, is a, sc a Sanskrit word for deity or I suppose we would class it as a, a as a god um, the, the Sanskrit derived from Indo-Iranian or Proto-Indo-European 
and the word uh, obviously this word is mutated and trans uh, changed do from the diva is to shine the Hindus call these deities twinkling and sleeping internal orbs of light now obviously everyone will say well they're stars then the de the divas in Hinduism are celestial beings that control the forces of nature fire air and wind they're not to be confused with uh, the supreme being of Vishnu or Shiva so they so they're telling you that they are forces of nature and of course then when you go back to the um, to my study into orbs so they they're they're shining they control the forces of nature what I've done is I've just put a picture of an orb with uh, <coughs> interesting four strands of energy shining out of the orb and there's a, a, a Flemish painting from the 1700s with an orb shining down to the ground so these things have been seen throughout history uh, but there was a time when our ancient ancestors lived with these gods uh, the divas and uh, they understand understood how these forces of nature um, brought sap well brought sap to rise in the springtime as these orbs attach into plants and various other things that we've seen throughout our throughout our study and so to me there isn't any question of what these divas are obviously the the Buddhist faith um, came out of Hinduism uh, it's I think it's generally accepted I'm not here to offend any Buddhists either but this is the interpretation of a diva from Buddhism higher sorts of divas shine with their luminosity and so we see those shining orbs divas are capable of moving at great s speeds flying through the air the lower divas sometimes accompany this through magical aids such as fly a flying chariot so um, what would we consider a flying chariot well we could consider it a sphere uh, what happened in our research is uh, we would have to uh, undertake a lot of burst photography to capture the same orb because of the speed they travel in we would click the photograph once and click it again or put it on a fast, a fast uh, burst photography and we would then get some of the movement of the orbs they would move from one place to the other they also appear and disappear so they move fast they appear and disappear uh, what we've got here is uh, an image of um, a mirror and the orb being reflected into the mirror uh, obviously a lot of people just suggest that these um, these things are just dust in front of the lens and I've got so much evidence of it I mean I put a little collage together uh, this is off my my YouTube account actually it's uh, the name of the book that I wrote in 2006 and what we have is a number of orbs attaching to trees so these are the nature the nature gods if you want to call them the nature divas uh, that interact with with um, plants and vegetation and we have them in uh, that, that interact with people as well so. so they shine they move fast uh, they're doing everything that the ancient scriptures say in fact so the there are other types of divas um, and again I mean I should sort of tie up with some Hindu scholars uh, I could talk to them about what the orb and bar and wave does maybe even what Shiva does 
but until uh, people engage with me then um, I'm not going to stand their scripture it would take me far too long to to learn it I mean Pythagoras uh, studied it and it suggested that his mathematics came from the Vedas so you know there's uh, Einstein read them so you know but it takes a long time and I, I haven't really got the time in my life now so this isn't meant to be an offense this is m m meant to be um, uh, my research in relation to what I think the Vedas are saying um, other scholars in Vedic uh, Vedic scholars should uh, try and contact me we could just have a little chat over Skype anyway there are uh, uh, d Davids that uh, that are very much like the Olympian gods, and the Olympian gods were very much like the biblical giants of ancient times. And these gods stood by what they they worked it out in in the Vedas of uh, one thousand five hundred feet tall. So these are the giants again that keep cropping up, and um, of course the orbs that attach to the sun are way b w uh, a lot bigger than the earth let alone anything else but uh, what i've done is uh, this is a thing called a geoglyph uh, this is 327 feet and this is etched on on the earth at the uh at the uh north ends 25 59 21 and east ends 40 30 30. so you can go to google earth and you can see these giants these giant orbs with tails you can see them on our sun and you can see the shining ones in space as well so I think it's a pretty clear picture that the demigods or the gods or the divas from the from the Vedic scriptures are central to my study into the energy of creation thank you very much um, any Vedic scholars contact me cheers then bye bye